Welcome. Uh, so in this brief lecture, I would um, bring out the similarities uh, and differences in oxygen reduction reaction and oxygen evolution reaction. Okay. So in a previous uh, lecture, we had seen uh, slightly more elaborately, how do you design electrocatalysts using density functional theory simulation? Uh, in this lecture, uh, we would try to use such principles, I mean, extend such principles to oxygen evolution reaction. All right, so if you see what is this is, uh, what, what are we depicting here? We are depicting the potential energy surface uh, in uh, the potential energy surface along one particular reaction coordinate. Okay, so this tells you progress of a reaction. And on the y axis, we talk about, um, we mentioned the delta G of certain process. So here, what is that? We can look at this process in two ways. You, this looks like water oxidation. That is, uh, that is this, this pathway. Uh, see, if you go from, uh, see, water oxidation means what? Here, whenever you think about oxidation, the ratio of oxygen increases. As H2O becomes oxygen, uh, you are going in this direction, okay? So, and when we go in this direction, there is oxygen reduction, right? So when you say reduction, we are talking about increase of hydrogen, component of hydrogen in your uh, species, right? So O2 is getting reduced to H2O or H2O is getting oxidized to oxygen, all right? So both are actually the opposite of each other. So one is an exothermic process uh, another is a endothermic process, right? So oxygen reduction reaction uh, occurs in a fuel cell. When O2 combines electrochemically, when it's electrochemically burnt uh, with hydrogen, you generate uh, you generate electrical power. Whereas if you want to split water into H2 and O2 uh, to evolve uh, uh, oxygen as well as hydrogen, you need energy for that process, right? So, uh, what is the thing we saw uh, in one of the previous lecture? We saw this process, right? So, it was just that uh, this thing is on the uh, right, but in the previous lecture, this was on the left, but this is exactly what we saw, right? So, at uh, u equal to zero, right? So, this, pro this potential energy profile um, is valid. Uh, that means this is more like gas phase burning of uh, H2 and O2, right? So, yeah, there is a decrease in uh, free energy, but there is no uh, generation of electrochemical potential, okay? So, th that's what this potential energy surface indicates, okay? And it goes to uh, different reaction inter intermediates. At, ox at U uh, equal to 7.78, why is this special? So that is the thing when uh, this has the same energy as uh, this particular state, right? So this has come here, uh, this has come here and so on, right? So that is the first step. And then at U equal to 1.23, why this is the, 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 the electro, you using delta G is equal to NFE, we get this, the, the entire delta G of this process uh, from here to here, times uh, 4 times Fe, okay? Uh, uh, Fe, uh, that e, e is equal to uh, 1.23, okay? So this is the electrochemical equivalent of the free energy, available free energy. Uh, the, uh, at this, uh, when, when there's a maximum potential that can be obtained from a fuel cell, right? So at uh, u, when it is u is equal to 1.23, uh, H2O is in equilibrium with four proton, four electron, and O2. Okay, that's what it means, right? So, and the uh, uh, U equal to 1.23 tells you what it is a determinant of the energy level of four electrons, right? So, this what determines the energy of a proton, the pH, right? You can get the free energy of proton using the pH. How do you get the free energy of electrons? Using this potential. Four times this value is the free energy of four electrons here. 
uh, which is in equilibrium with H2, 2 H2O, and then you get O2 at a given partial pressure, which gives the chemical potential. Okay. This is what we have already seen. But here, what we see is the, uh, okay, this is all for platinum 1, 1. See, this we analyze for platinum 1, 1, 1 surface, right? So you are using the same surface. You are trying to uh, do, so, okay, so what does it really mean? So you have an electrode, okay? So at 1.23, this is in equilibrium with the, these species, right? And see, if you want to generate, uh, uh, see, uh, if you want to uh, have high rates, right? So you want, you will be operating the fuel cell only at 0.78, okay? When you go to, let's say anything above uh, 0.78, what, what do you see? You see an activation barrier, right? So when I can't, when, uh, till U is equal to 0 0.78, there is no activation barrier. So everything is downhill. But as soon as you go below 0.78, small activation barriers start occurring. At U is equal to 1.23, there is significant activation barrier. Okay, so, so typically the over potential, which is defined as 1.23 minus the operational uh, potential of the fuel cell. So you typically get, the, you try to operate the fuel cell at maximum rates, at maximum current uh, rates. At uh, maximum current rates, the thermodynamic potential, the potential which you get of a fuel cell is not 1.23, right? At, uh, as soon as you go to 1.23 or anything below uh, 0.78, there'll be some uh, activation barriers, which is going to decrease your rates. So, and also if you want to do uh, water oxidation, that is, right, so that is if I, operate here in this potential energy surface, uh, uh, my, uh, uh, there, there is, um, so th this is the uh, potential, right? So if you apply 1.2.25, okay? So uh, I would, uh, what becomes uh, favorable? H2O, H2O2, H2O is not favorable, right? So compared to H2O, uh, this state, that is the O2 and uh, H2 state, see, for a for, for photon, for, for electron, is equivalent to uh, 2H2, right? Two, uh, so, anything below 1.23, uh, this uh, O2 and H2O becomes more stable than O2 and H2 becomes more stable than water itself, right? So, that you are... You are uh, give, giving the thermodynamic, providing thermodynamic driving force for water splitting into uh, H2 and O2. That's what it means, the entire. Thing. So the more potential your um, electrode is, this species is stabilized more and more. And as you keep on increasing the potential, uh, you are stabilizing this, the driving force for water splitting into these products keeps on increasing. So in platinum one one uh, thing, which is not a very good uh, a catalyst actually. Okay, so it's a good catalyst for oxygen reduction, but it's not a good catalyst for uh, water splitting. Okay, so uh, because as you can see, right? So when you go here uh, for both this in this direction and in this direction, there is activation barrier. Right? If you go in this direction, there is some activation barrier here. In fact, when you go from uh, in this direction, that is from left to right, there is even greater activation barrier here, right? Uh, so uh, platinum 111 is not a good uh, catalyst, okay, for uh, water splitting, okay? So the take home message is uh, one oxygen re reduction reaction is the exact opposite of oxygen evolution reaction. That's what I wanted to convey here, okay? So likewise, you can, li like, you can also have a volcano plot for oxygen evolution reaction, right? So you, what is that you're trying to, the, the reaction you're considering is water is there, it binds to an uh, active site, for, forms a hydroxyl radical and a, a, a proton plus electron. Remember, the chemical potential of proton plus a chemical potential of electron can be related to gas phase hydrogen, right? So using this computational standard hydrogen electrode. Uh, then in the next step, hydroxyl uh, gives rise right to oxygen ad atom, oxygen bound to the active site, proton plus electron. Then in the next step, this is the next step. And then eventually you form O2, right? So this 
uh, proton, uh, so liberated, gets transferred across the electrolyte and will combine with an electron via the wire to generate hydrogen on the other side. Okay, so we are again we are talking about oxygen evolution reaction, oxygen reduction reaction because these are the tougher. Uh, reaction okay so in in water oxidation this is a harder reaction uh, a proton combining with electron to form hydrogen I, uh, that is so called hydrogen evolution reaction doesn't have too much over potential that that can ha happen much more easily compared to breaking the strong bonds of h2o uh, it's similar to what we did in oxygen reduction reaction right reducing o2 is the harder problem not uh, splitting h2 okay that's the easier problem all right, so again we can plot. So, uh, like we plotted the volcano plot for uh, oxygen reduction reaction, you can have a volcano plot for oxygen evolution reaction, right? So, there's a particular descriptor uh, which is one of the binding energies, and here we are having O potential, right? So, at the peak of the volcano, these are the best catalysts, they have very less O potential or as less you can get. But as you go on, the uh, there are many catalysts that have very high O potential. Okay, so so the two legs of the volcano are because of in this leg oxygen binds too strongly. Okay, so uh, it this intermediate is very strong. Uh, therefore, oxygen liberation is not very easy. Okay, in the other leg, oxygen O2 binds too weakly. Uh, this is. Uh, going to have higher barrier. Okay, so there are two uh, legs of a volcano uh, which have optimized only one of the processes. In this leg, uh, this is an easy step because of which some other step becomes harder. In this step, oxygen binding is too weak. Uh, therefore, this uh, this process becomes rate determining. All right. So uh, the good catalyst is balance between these two factors. So another important thing to uh, understand is. If you look at these steps, okay, the, all these steps are in a way correlated, right? So in a way that, see, you, uh, if you look at even the, these steps, if you see, you would anticipate uh, an active site uh, that binds very well to hydroxyl. Hydroxyl binding energy is sort of coupled to, related to oxygen binding energy. Right, so all these things are not completely independent parameters. Okay, this is so called uh, okay, so there is something called a scaling uh, relationship which sort of makes this uh, optimization difficult. Okay, uh, so if all these things were independent parameters, that is, if, if you could independently uh, change the binding energies, uh, we would be able to design catalysts much easily. But these are not really independent parameters. All these binding energies scale in a particular way or related in a particular way, okay? Uh, which prevents uh, this uh, sort of a modern topic in uh, uh, catalysis, okay? So scaling relationship and uh, how it limits uh, going beyond uh, this point, okay. So you may ask, right? So are we to just say that you we have? Do we have to accept this O potential of 0.4? Can't we even decrease it even further? Can we get it to 0 0.05 and so on? What makes this difficult is now all these things are not independent uh, quantities, okay? There is uh, this is co correlated to this is correlated to this and so on, okay? Uh, because of which the amounts of uh, modulation possible is not that high. Okay, so I will stop here.